what is a rock? Well, we define it as any natural mass of mineral matter that makes up the surface of the earth which we call the earth's crust. Quite complicated, isn't it? To understand rock first, we need to understand what minerals are. Minerals are substances found in nature. Humans like you and me cannot create them out of thin air. Every time you examine a mineral under similar circumstances, you will come across the same characteristics and properties in it. This is possible because minerals are made up of a definite mixture of atoms or molecules. We describe the ratio of atoms or molecules that make up a substance as chemical composition. So what are minerals? Minerals are naturally occurring substances which have certain physical properties and definite chemical composition. For example, quartz, feldspar and mica are minerals. Now what if these three minerals are found bundled together? Well, when all these three minerals, classy looking quartz, dull white feldspar and mica are mixed together, we get a rock. Granite. Yes, rocks are made up of minerals. I am sure you must have seen this particular rock around in daily life. In your kitchen countertops, slab tiles in washrooms, pavements on city streets. Right? Now, you must have seen different kinds of rocks. They differ in shape, size, color and texture. So much variety, isn't it? Studying all of them at once is pretty difficult. That's why we classify them into categories. On the basis of formation, rocks are classified into three categories. Igneous, sedimentary and metamorphic. Let's understand the first type, igneous rock. We know that earth is divided into three layers and the middle layer mantle is very hot and made up of a molten mixture of minerals. This mixture is called magma. When this magma finds a way through the mantle and comes to the crust layer, it cools down and solidifies. The solidified magma becomes a rock. This rock is called igneous rock. The word igneous comes from the Latin word ignis, which means fire. When the molten magma cools, it becomes solid. Rocks thus formed are called igneous rocks. Igneous rocks are of two types. Intrusive igneous rocks and extrusive igneous rocks. This classification is based on the manner in which these rocks were formed. Let's talk about intrusive igneous rocks first. When hot and molten magma from the mantle rises up and reaches the crust layer, but fails to reach the surface, it cools down and solidifies in the crust. The rock so formed is called intrusive igneous rock. Intrusive igneous rocks cool down slowly. Thus, they form large crystals which are quite visible by the naked eye. Do you remember granite? It's an intrusive igneous rock. Can you notice that crystals are large and easily identifiable? It is used in building kitchen and washroom floor tiles, pavements, monuments, bridges, buildings, etc. Let us talk about extrusive igneous rocks. They are formed when the hot magma rises up to the surface of the earth. When this hot molten magma comes to the surface, 
it's called lava. This magma rises to the crust layer and then to the surface. Here, it comes in contact with the water and air. It solidifies and cools in their presence. The rock so formed is called extrusive igneous rock or volcanic rock. Extrusive rocks cool down quickly. Thus, it has a very fine texture. Formation of crystals requires slow cooling. The crystals of the rock need time for settling down. Faster rate of cooling that occurs during the formation of extrusive rocks does not allow time for crystal formation. So generally, you will find extrusive rocks with very small or no crystals at all. Basalt and rhyolite are examples of extrusive igneous rock. If you like this video and want to watch many many more amazing videos like these, like and subscribe to our channel now.